signatures have been used since time immemorial to establish identity and authenticate a message. Signatures have undergone transformations in each era from impressions to intricate seals to scribing one's own name. In this digital era, signatures have manifested in the form of digital signatures. Armed with legal sanctity, digital signatures are being adopted widely across applications, domains and sectors. Let's see what the desired properties of a signature are. A signature needs to provide assurance of identity of the signer, that's authentication. It needs to provide credible evidence that the signer had indeed involved in the act of signing and could not deny it later, that's non-repudiation. It should also provide the assurance that the contents or data has not been modified since it was signed and that's integrity. Hence, a digital signature has to achieve the aforesaid properties in a medium where copying and modification of a document or message is as simple as a click and where transfer of data is measured in seconds. And that's the major challenge. This is where the concepts of cryptography help us to firmly establish the authenticity of the digital signature, integrity of the document and also provide the non-repudiation ability. In a handwritten signature, though the process of authentication is fairly simple and generally done by visual comparison with a specimen signature, the reliability of the process is a question. However, digital signatures provide a foolproof mechanism to authenticate a signature and that can be done by anybody without the need for any previous or specimen signature. There are two cryptographic concepts used in the process of digital signing. One, cryptographic hash functions that produce a fingerprint, also known as message digest, of the input message or document, every time producing the same fingerprint for the same message. Any change to the input message will produce a very different fingerprint. Another most important characteristic of hash functions is that one cannot retrieve the original input using the fingerprint. It is very much similar to a fingerprint of an individual that captures the uniqueness of an individual. Like a fingerprint cannot be used to create a sketch of the individual, a message digest cannot be used for constructing back the original message. Hash functions are used in many applications including the ones that we use daily for logging in, where only the hash value of the passwords is stored in the application. The second cryptographic concept that comes to play is asymmetric key cryptography. In asymmetric key cryptography, algorithms such as RSA, DSA and similar ones use two large prime numbers for generating public and private keys. This key pair functions in a very unique way that is, if you encrypt a message with one of the keys, you can decrypt the message only by using the other key. One of the keys is kept private, while the other key can be shared to anybody and is referred as the public key. An analogy could be a lock with a special pair of keys designed in such a way that if you lock with one of the keys, then only the other key in the key pair can unlock it. Another important aspect of these keys is that though they are mathematically related to each other, it is computationally infeasible to deduce one of the keys from the other key. That is, one may not be able to derive the private key by using the public key or the other way around. A key pair is issued to an individual and is used to uniquely identify that individual through the public key of that key pair. A digital signature for a message is created through the following process. The message is fed to the cryptographic hash algorithm that produces a message digest. The message digest is then encrypted by the signer using his private key. This digital signature is then appended to the message. Anybody who wants to verify the authenticity and integrity of the digitally signed document now will perform the following steps. The received message is fed to the cryptographic algorithm that produces the message digest. The digital signature that came along with the message 
is decrypted using the signer's public key that produces the message digest computed by the signer at the time of digital signing. If both the message digests match, then the document has not been tampered, integrity is assured through message digest, and the claim signer had indeed digitally signed it. Authenticity is assured as the public key of the signer was able to successfully decrypt the digital signature. Let's look at the important differences between handwritten signatures and digital signatures. A handwritten signature is user-dependent, meaning the signer is not going to change his pattern or style of signing based on the content of the document. However, a digital signature is both user and content dependent, meaning a digital signature will vary based on the user, based on the private key and the content. Hence. If you digitally sign a message, the digital signature would be different for different contents of the message, as message digest would be different. If you and me sign the same content, then also our digital signatures would be different, as our private keys would be different. Therefore, the digital signature is a number that is derived based on the signer's secret, private key, and the contents of the document. A digital signature can guarantee integrity and authenticity of the signed document. But what if the signer later denies digitally signing a document by claiming that the private key used for signing is no longer used by him or saying somebody had misused his private key? We need a reliable and trustable mechanism such that once a signer digitally signs, he or she cannot later deny it, that is, ability for non-repudiation. Here comes the concept of certificates that can certify the public key of an individual. But who can issue this certificate? A certifying authority, CA, issues the certificate to individuals after verification. But how can a CA be trusted? In fact, we need an authority that can be trusted by everybody. In India, we have the CCA, Controller of Certifying Authority, the apex organization that licenses and regulates the certifying authorities, CA, as per the Indian IT Act. So, any CA trusted by CCA can be trusted by us. As an individual, generally referred as subscriber, we can approach any CA licensed by CCA and obtain a digital signature certificate called as DSC, who issues it after verification of our credentials. Once a DSC is obtained, one can digitally sign documents that carry legal sanctity as per the Indian IT Act. A DSC is also a digital document that contains information about the user and his or her public key that it is certifying and the details about the issuer of the certificate. Each DSC is digitally signed by the issuer. CAs form the pillar of PKI infrastructure. They verify, issue and revoke various types and classes of certificates to individuals and organizations for various purposes including digital signing, encryption, etc. While types define the purpose for which a certificate is issued for, classes define the level of assurance for the relying party. In India, class 2 and class 3 certificates are demanded in all applications with class 3 providing the highest level of assurance as it is issued after verifying the credentials of the user as well as the organization that he or she belongs to. How to get a DSC? Apply online to any of the CAs of your choice. Fill the form and submit the required proof. Make the payment. Upon successful verification, a crypto token will be issued to you. The private key is protected inside the crypto token with a PIN. Use the crypto tokens to generate a pair of keys and send the public key to the CA for getting a digital signature certificate. The CA then issues the DSC, after which your digital signature gains legal sanctity. Now, you would have understood that digital signatures and digital signature certificates can provide you authenticity, integrity and non-repudiation. Sometimes, you may also need confidentiality or secrecy of communications. This too can be achieved by the public key infrastructure 
again using the concepts of cryptography. Let's take an analogy from the asymmetric crypto system to understand this. If somebody wants only you to access a room, a resource or a document, that user can lock it with your public key, ensuring that only you can unlock it with your private key. This way, the secrecy of the communication is achieved and only the intended recipient can decrypt it. There will be several instances where you need all the elements of trust to be in place, namely confidentiality, authenticity, integrity and non-repudiation in a transaction. An example could be an e-procurement application wherein the secrecy of bid is required along with the authenticity and integrity of the bid. This is achieved through a process called Signcryption. Signcryption is similar to the following analogy. Consider a situation where you want to rent a house but you could not physically meet the house owner. How will you unlock it? Also, how will you verify the house belongs to the person who you assume is the owner? This is how you do it. The owner locks the room with her private key. This ensures that only her public key can unlock it. This proves her ownership of the house. Then, the owner covers the lock with another lock and uses your public key to lock the second lock. This ensures that only you can unlock it. Now, for you to gain access to the house, you need to unlock the outer lock using your private key and gain access to the inner lock. Then, using the public key of the person, you can unlock the inner lock. This verifies that no one has tampered with the inner lock. In practice, a bidder prepares the bid and digitally signs them. Next, he encrypts the digitally signed bid using the public key of the tenderer and submits it. This combined process of digital signing and encryption ensures all the elements of trust, namely secrecy or confidentiality, authenticity, integrity and non-repudiation. To summarize, for digital signing, one uses his or her own private key and for verification, the verifier uses the signer's public key. For encryption, one uses the receiver's public key and the receiver will then use his or her private key for decryption. Digital signatures and public key infrastructure has widespread applications in various sectors and can be used in all applications and services wherever a signature is required. Few notable applications of digital signatures are e-tax filing, e-passport, e-governance, e-procurement, etc. Digital signatures and PKI has the potential to bring in transparency, accountability and can provide significant time, cost and effort savings. PKI is an ecosystem comprising of algorithms drawn from cryptography implemented using standards and guidelines, governed by policies and laws, and enabled through applications spanning several domains.